this is Brother Jeff coming at you live. <laughs> church and Marshall talking about church government, kingdom of God, it's exciting stuff. And I, I believe the body of Christ is in transition. We're transitioning out of religious foundations, religious thinkings. We're trending now toward the kingdom. And uh, God is revealing his word to us like never before. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to Matthew chapter 16 and review here a few minutes. And we're talking about church government. Well, the government be begins with Jesus Christ. We talked about that out of nine, uh, Isaiah 9, chapter 6. The government is upon his shoulders. Isaiah 22. He is the key to the house, his government. We talked about that. It's Jesus. He's the one. So if you go to, again, to Matthew 16, verse 13. Let's read. And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am the Son of Man? And they said, some said that thou art John the Baptist, Elias, other Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So we see here they did not recognize Christ fully in the spirit. They thought he was another prophet, another teacher, or some other uh, man of God. They didn't know he was God in the flesh. So let's read on. They had no clue of the relationship that Jesus Christ had with his father. Let me read on. And they said, Some that, that thou art John the Baptist, Elias, other Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered, said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now we see here the father is revealing his ultimate strategy is his son. God so loved the world, he sent his son. And Christ did not bring us a religion. He brought us a government. He brought us a kingdom. He brought us a relationship, see. He understood what the first Adam lost. He lost his dominion. He lost his relationship with God. But Christ has come to restore us back to God. That means back to a kingdom, back to a government, back to a rule. So we see here Christ has come back. Again, this visitation of the Lord is to restore man back to his original state. We see that. God revealed it to Peter. Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Now that's our foundation, our identity. Even as Christ was a son of God, he has invited us in, hallelujah, into the family. He even told us how to pray. When you pray, pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, what is it in heaven? We have a father and a son. And Christ is inviting us in, in on this by saying, when you pray, pray our father. His will is for us to pray our father. Now, we have to transition into that understanding in the body of Christ. We've been so uh, uh, full of ministry. <laughs> you know, we go to school for ministry. We teach ministry, ministry, ministry. But our first order, we have to understand that our origin, we came from a father. And understanding that, that brings us into sonship. And this deals with understanding now how God operates and functions when it comes to his kingdom and his government. So we see Jesus now begins to bless Peter because he recognizes something in the spirit. And he begins to say, upon this rock, now Peter talking about himself, him being the government, remember Jesus is the government. Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. My church. Now, what is the church? It is a big, beautiful buildings on every other block in America. What does he mean by that? I will build mine. Well, to understand the parallel, we look at, if you study history, you look at the Greeks and the Romans, uh, they had a word called ecclesia. And this is a Greek word for church, ecclesia. This is where their senators, their governors met for counsel. And Christ understood, understood that, that Greek word at that time. He prophesied, says, look, the Romans have an ecclesia. Uh, the Greeks have an ecclesia for their government and rule. I'm going to build me an ecclesia, a people, a people who have rule, people who understand government, a people who understand that they're under the rule of a king. I'm going to build me a base of government. See, we have missed the understanding of that because the the good King James Version, he calls church a building where Christian people meet to worship. Now that has some truth to it, but it's more depth than that. We are a called out people. We may go to a building because there's so many of us. That's the only reason. 
Somebody asked me, why y'all assemble on Sunday? I said, because we all work. Most people all work. It could be Tuesday. It could, have been, <laughs> it could be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It doesn't matter. We are to assemble bone to his bone. We are his body. So we see here now Christ is adamant about building him a, a edifice, a family, a place where he dwells. Now, nobody understood this revelation like Apostle Paul. And uh, if you go to Ephesians for a minute, let's look at Ephesians and look at something here. Ephesians chapter 1. Now, Paul picked up on this word church, and he began to bring understanding to us. Look all the way down in verse 21. It says, Far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. I have put all things under his feet. Now, we're talking about Christ himself. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. We see now the church is his body, his people, his family. Now, in the book of Acts, they begin to understand this more and more. But a great persecution you know, rose up against the church. It didn't say against the building. Persecution didn't come against a building on the block, but a people, a called out people. Why? Because they were believing in Christ. They were receiving Jesus Christ. So persecution broke out. It wasn't against a building. <laughs> it was against the people. So understand that we are the body of Christ. And what Christ is doing is wanting to bring kingdom understanding to his people and our generation. So let's, trans, let's transition into kingdom thinking, kingdom culture. Uh, let's look at, again, the word church from a different perspective now. Understanding we are called out people. Understanding that Christ is building us. Look at verse 19. He says, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now we see the authority that he's given to the church to bind and loose. In other words, if you allow Satan to, to rule your life, then that's your fault. Because Christ has given us authority. He's given us rule to bind and to loose. And we have to push back against the enemy right now. He's encroaching upon the church. He's taking territory because we're saying nothing. We're doing nothing about it. But the scripture says, when we, when we get together, the Bible says, and pray, come together, God heals the land, the power of God is manifested. All this is because of the church, the ecclesia, when she comes together. So there's power and agreement when it comes to the church. Again, he says in Matthew 22, tell it to the church. When someone is in error, he again says they won't receive it. He says, tell it to the church, the governing body of Christ. We are a governing body. Christ did not bring us religion. See, he brought us a government, an ecclesia, called out ones unto the head, Christ Jesus. Now, again, let's review more. Look at Matthew chapter 2, and let's look at this scripture again. Verse 6, it says, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art thou not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. What came out of Judah? A governor, a governor, a ruler. And this word is it's a powerful Greek word, governor. And it, it has to do with governing and overseeing. And this is a powerful word. Hegemai, governor, it's the word Hegemai it means to lead or command, if you would, to govern. That's who Christ is. And he said to rule. This word rule is a powerful word as well. And this is a this has to do with governing, overseeing. And so Christ has come to oversee his creation. What Satan has stolen, he became, he came to repossess and cause us to be reconnected back to our purpose. And that's Jesus Christ and that's the Father. So we understand now this government has come to overrule Satan and his government in our life. And according to the scripture, that Christ is, is God. And even the demons cried out, Have thou come to cast us out before our time? He says, Yes, because any time the kingdom shows up, the other kingdom has to dissipate. Darkness, it has to go. So we got to understand it, that the government it starts with Jesus Christ. And from that we see that 
This governor, if we allow him, he begins to rule our life. He begins to deal with situations and drive them out. That's what he does. He drives them out. And anytime you receive Jesus Christ, something else has to go. <laughs> Yes, he replaces all of that fleshly anger, hostility, all unforgiveness. He begins to drive that out of your life. And what does he set up? Righteousness. What does he set up in your life? Peace. What does he set up? Joy. Why? Because it's the kingdom of God. So give way to his government in your personal life, and we're going to be discussing church government here in a few. But we have to lay a foundation first that it starts with Jesus Christ. He's building, if you would. He's laying himself in the saints and becoming, if you would, their foundation. Their foundation. But he said in Matthew chapter 7, hearken to my saying, it's like building your house on a rock, building your house on the true foundation. So I'm dealing with that individual Christ. And if you can get this and obey his sayings, man, you're talking about taking away stress, worry, out of life and your house become a sure foundation. <laughs> when the winds blow, the rain comes, you won't be moved. So today, if you can hear me, build your house upon Christ, the rock, and understand that he's building you, and he gave five-fold gifts to build. We'll be discussing that here shortly. And all this deals with God is coming to take back that which Satan has stolen. The scriptures do verify for this purpose <laughs> was the Son of God made manifest to destroy the work of the devil. Well, how is he doing it? By extending his rule and his government. Not religion, but his government. So until next time, thank you, this is Brother Jeff. We'll continue this. God bless.